mail bag time. We've got a whole bunch of stuff here. I could do this in two mail bags, but I'm so far ahead with them, I think I'll just do one massive one. So stick around. We'll go through these things, small to big. We'll see what happens. Let's see what we've got in these. Some SOP 23 devices, wherever they are. 23 3 devices. Um, 6 amp, 40 volt. It is MOSFET. It says MOSFET there, a disposable MOS. WST4041. Is this something I ordered ages ago and it's been so long I forgot about it? Possibly. Resistors. Quarter watt 2012 resistor and 0805 resistor. So these are, yeah, okay, 0 0.025 ohm resistors. Like current shunt things. That's what these are before. And 0 0.05 ohm resistors. So I think I got these for some little uh, lithium charge controller devices. Like I've got some little charge control modules. And you can change the charge rate depending on the resistor that's installed on them for the current sensing. And you can buy different modules with different resistors already pre-filled on them. I thought, well, if I get some resistors, I can tune them as I want. You know, in some cases I could just get some which are, you know, one amp, or I could do half an amp on them or trickle charge it, or whatever it may be. So, guess what those are. I didn't actually have any of these really low value ones like this in service mount type. I've got them in through hole type, but not service mount. What's this? FDN 360P. SOT 233. I've got no idea what these are either. <laughs> I can't blame a late night drinking session because I don't really drink that much, so not that. Hmm, I don't know. I guess I'll have to figure it out. Hmm, interesting packaging. It's like air sealed. Never had that before. What is it? Let's put a lot of effort to try and protect it, wherever it is. Ah, excellent. Can you see what it says? iPhone 6S Plus. It's a camera, rear mount camera. My camera's been acting weird on my phone. Basically, sometimes the image just jiggles around everywhere. And you quit the app and reopen the app, and it's fine. Usually, not always. So it's weird, it's like if it's having trouble with the auto focusing or something, it's just going crazy. So I thought I'd just get a new camera so I can pop this in. Shouldn't be that hard to change it out. Okay. That's a Baofeng programming cable. What's this other bag? Software. Lovely. So this is the original software for the Baofeng and the programming cable. So I already got one of this program cable with the radios I picked up because I did buy some of these. One of the kits I bought actually came with the program cable, so now I've got a spare, which is always good. You always need spares, because if you lose one, then you've still got one somewhere. Chances are you, you won't be able to find one of them at least. And I've been using Chirp with it. Chirp is a programming system for various handhelds, and it supports the Baofeng, but this came with the original software as well. Now the thing with Chirp is that it's multi-platform, so I can actually use it on my Mac. This is only for PC. Chirp is probably more useful to me because I can actually use it on my Mac. But this may offer some features which Chirp doesn't. Well, that support does seem pretty good on it. This one's looking a bit crushed. I'm not quite sure what's happened to this. I don't even know what's in it, but not yet anyway. Hopefully it's not a problem. Basis. Oh, right, okay. Charging port thing. Should be okay, I expect. Fine. So it's one of these USB extensions, so you've got a USB-C port on here, and on here, and you've got some USB 3 ports on the sides here. So it just allows you to expand out to get some more ports on your device. I've been buying a few different things like this recently because of my change to a Mac Pro, a 2013 version, which is actually built in 2016, end of 2016 apparently this one, the one I actually got. So it wasn't really early ones, it's one of the later ones. Well, I suppose middle, middle ones, wasn't it really? I stopped in 2019, I think it was. Anyway, that didn't have enough ports on it, because I need a lot of ports for doing all the video streaming stuff, and I do my live streams, and 
the webcams and microphones and all the other things I plugged into it. I need loads of ports and I've got this big mess of wiring behind the thing right now. I don't want to tidy it up so I'm trying different kinds of sources out now. This thing does have six Thunderbolt 2 ports on it. Thunderbolt 3 is the USB connector. So I actually got a Apple adapter. Thing is it needs to have a power supply if you're going to adapt from Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3 because the devices it connects up through that converter they aren't powered you have to have a, a power supply going to the device so as I found that out anyway and that means I probably can't use this unless I can power it through the USB port on the side there I don't know maybe I can but I have to figure something out oh, there's another version along the same lines. So USB-C to SD card and USB 3.2 port adapter and it also has this connection here at this end. So it's got USB-C power connector and PC control as well so you, you know, you go to your computer. So you can get power into this end and that end can go to my adapter. So this one is more likely to work correctly. This is more like I think is going to do the job so this can go through the a Thunderbolt converter from Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 2 and that will plug straight into that and then this end has got a supply a power supply into this end and that will power the unit so I think this will be this will be the thing I need looks pretty nice I actually think I ordered a second one of these as well which has got more ports on it this will sit quite nicely on the desk next to the computer and I'll just plug the SD card stuff in the front nice and easy and also spare ports looks nice enough also came with a USB-C to USB 3 Adapter, or it might just be USB. Yeah, it's got five pins in the USB. It's USB three. That can be go to a computer or maybe to the charging port, whichever way I use it. Oh, even more packages. Just like more resistors. Oh, it's a kit. This one. So it's a T five one two SMDs. So one ohm, half an ohm, 0.47 0 0.33, 0 0.22, 0 0.2, 0 0.15, 0 0.1, 0 0.05, and 0 0.01 ohms. And got some 0.025s there. Another kit the same. Another kit the same. Another kit the same. And some 0.1s here. So yep. Yeah, so I've now got a nice selection of low resistance, current shunt type resistors for devices. So, like I said before, I don't have many of these things or any of these things, and I need to get some because I wasn't quite sure what I was going to be doing. And as I don't have them, it pays to stock up because I will definitely use them. Um, there's been times I wish I had them and I didn't have them, and I had to do workarounds. Not anymore. <laughs> All arrived at the same time. Here's some more resistors. Some 1206s. Oh, no, these are fuses. 2000, 1000, I'm guessing that's 1 amp, 2 amps, 3 amps, 7 amps, 4 amps, and 5 amps. That would make sense. So SMD fuses have got a letter on them to donate the uh, value. These ones here are T's. These ones here are S's. Does mean something. There you go, 10 pin FPC connectors service mount ones. These work on these sharp memory displays which I use in projects. I've been using a pre-made like adapter board to do wiring but I actually do want to potentially change it so it's directly onto the circuit board of the actual device I'm using rather than using an adapter. I wanted to get a few of these in case I play around them. Might make something up. It seems with the service mount stuff I've ordered is coming at the same time. Got some more SMD fuses. These are the different type, so these are these larger ones, but it's a 375 milliamp and a 125 milliamp fuse. So these are the fuses that are used in the Advantist ANR digit multimeter, which I've got. I did a little video on it showing me repairing it because the display went out on it and it turned out it was a blown fuse and it's a blown 375 milliamp fuse. I didn't have any, I only had um, 500 milliamp and 250 milliamp. So I ended up putting on a 250. So far it hasn't blown again. But if it does go, which I expect it probably will, I've got the right fuses now to put in there. I did actually want to put a holder in, but I couldn't quite access it to get the holder in place, which is a shame, means I have to solder things in. 
but it's not really that big a deal. The hole will be really nice because it's easy to change it in the future, but uh, anyway, I got them now, that's good. These are little belt holder things for radios. There's a particular one called the MSC20D, and you can basically use these for carrying a radio, those little handheld radios, you know, like this is for the Baofeng uh, S, which is what I've intended to use them for. So those can go on your belt through there, or if you want to, you can use one of these over the shoulder straps, I suppose, and you can carry it that way instead. Or some other way with these loops as well. So you just put the radio in there, clip it in, and then if you've got one of those like um, wired microphones you can plug into it, you can use that instead. Quite possible. I've just got two of those, both the same. Just about done, we've got this package and then one more. And the last thing is quite a cool thing, so make sure you stick around for that. I'm guessing this is Laura modules. It just feels like it is. Yes it is. I've shown these loads of times. These are 900T20Ds. Yeah, and I've got some 900T30Ds as well in there. These are just for stock. So I've got a supply of them. I've been using these and these are working well now. I did have a problem with this style originally, these are newer version. And I had problem communication issues with them. It turned out it was something silly, basically. I was using some pull down resistors, I think it was, but the values were a little bit too big. On newer modules it's fine, they were working okay. Later modules, they mean they're floating around the half voltage point. So instead of sitting around you know half a volt or so on a pull down. It's sitting at around one and a half to two volts around there, usually around close to one and a half volts, maybe 1.7 volts or so, and that is also causing an invalid logic state. That was what's causing that problem. But anyway, I've figured out that problem, and now I've got a bunch of these for stock because you never know when these are going to blow up or fail, and I like to have plenty of them. And who knows, in a year's time, you might not be get these anymore. Can't get the original one which I was using. I don't want to make sure I've got plenty of these to keep me going for years. So that's redesigned the whole thing. All right, last thing. So this is a Lie Bodner device. Some of you might know what that is, or what it could be. There's a few of them. There is. And there's this response curve thing. So this is a pulsar. Lie Bodner pulsar. This thing puts out really fast rise time pulses. The idea of this is that you can use this to test an oscilloscope to check its frequency bandwidth. Now obviously you can do analog bandwidth and stuff like that like based on the vertical resolution and the actual scaling. So you know when you get down to 0 0.707 volts for example, you know you get down to 3 dB point. But this can actually measure the rise time and give you another theoretical reason to test the actual bandwidth. So you've got the vertical resolution and also the response time which is also a very important thing to know. Now I did use one of these before I actually found out about this from Rob from Tabaka Technologies, who is a Siglant rep. He had one of these and he left it with me to play with on one of the new scopes. Was it the STS 5000? I think it was one of those. I tried it on that, I thought that looks pretty interesting. It's a nice simple thing to use. So I got one. Not that expensive, but the idea is that you can give a nice fast rise time and it means you can calculate the actual bandwidth based on the rise time. There's a calculation for it. So this one is being tested as 38.68 picoseconds. Brilliant. This is how it performs. Some of you vault nut nerds will probably be enjoying this quite a lot. And this isn't sponsored, but that's the web address in case you want to get something like this too. They do a few different things. Some examples there, go and check them out. Like I said, not sponsored. I pay for this thing. And there it is. So it's called a 40 peak a second, but I was actually getting 38 on this one apparently, according to the test. So you got USB power, got a trigger output in case you need it. So basically just plug a USB power supply into this. You put this directly onto the input of your scope, and you can test it with that. Simple to use, just plug it in and use it. Look at that, it even says on the end of the box. That was a long video, so hope you enjoyed it. Check out the other videos down below. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed over there. Patreon you support link over there if you want to help me buy best and pieces to do mailbags and visit Tesco and stuff. Maybe some more lighting. I'm not quite sure. Is it just dark in here or is it me?